In this video, I'm going to look at how you can draw shapes on a TK Inter canvas using lines. Let's consider this triangular shape, and I'm going to draw it using lines in Python. Now, there are other ways in which we can draw these shapes that I'll come on to in other videos later in this playlist. But essentially, if you consider this triangle, it's made up of three lines. And if we look at the coordinate positions for each line in turn, you can see here that I'm saying that this is at position 100, 100. This one here is when x is 300 and y is 100. And this one here has the coordinate position of x is 200 and y is 300. And these three lines are drawn onto a canvas that has a width of 400 and a height of 400. Now if I consider the segment of code responsible for drawing these three lines, you can see it here. And we can see that this line has these coordinates. So we can see we go from 100, 100, which is this position, to 300, 100, which is this position here and you can see we're filling it in with the color blue i.e. we're drawing the line in blue and I'm making the width 5 because I want it to be big enough for us to see. If I come on to this line you can see I'm going between this coordinate which is this position on the line to this one here which is this position in terms of its coordinates. And finally, we come on to this line here, and that will go from this position, which is 200, 300, to this position, which takes us back to here. So we end up with the shape of a triangle, as you can see. Let's take a close look at the triangle, and I'm going to look at this corner here, and I'll magnify it, and if you look, it doesn't look that good, does it? It doesn't show a good join between the both lines that have been drawn. Let's consider this triangle that's been drawn by Python, and have a look at the same corner, and you can see it's a much neater join. Now there are various ways to improve the way in which lines join to each other and I'm going to cover that in later videos in this playlist. What I want to do now however is to look at an alternative way of drawing this triangle using one line of code that has multiple points for the line that's going to be Drawn. Let's remind ourselves of this shape again and its coordinate positions. Now the canvas is 400 by 400 and I'm saying that this position here is at 100, 100 for the X and the Y. This coordinate position is when X is 300 and Y is 100 and this coordinate position is when X is 200 and Y is 300. So we've gone along the X axis 200 and we've gone down the Y axis 300 to this point. Now, rather than draw three separate lines, as we've seen already in this video, we can draw this triangle with one line. And the line of code that achieves that is shown here. And we can see we have a message that invokes this method. And we have this position here, this coordinate position, 100, 100. Now, that clearly is this position here. And then we have 300, 100, which is clearly this position. So the line is drawn from here to here. Now what we can see is we have this coordinate position here and that is 200, 300 which is this here. So the line now carries on drawing in this direction and then when we look to the coordinate positions here we can see that that is 100, 100 which is telling us that the line is now going to go back to this position and it's now completed the triangle and of course we can see the fill is blue and the width is five so we can see it so this one line has replaced the three lines that we saw for the previous segments of code that drew each line individually whereas what this is doing it's using these coordinate positions four of them it needs this one this one this one and it also needs this one again because it needs to know where it's going back to to draw the triangular shape. Now using this one line is obviously better than using three separate lines but it also has the advantage of giving us this better join here as we can see in this corner. Let's now look at the full program for drawing the triangle. As usual we need this when we're using TKinter. 
This will create the window onto which we're going to place the canvas. As you can see here, we're passing in the name that's bound to the window. We're setting the width of the canvas to 400 by 400, and we're making the background of the canvas white. And this will position the canvas. Now, this is the line that's responsible for drawing the triangle. And of course, we have here the main loop. And when we look at this line of code, it's a message to this instance that it invokes this method, and these are the arguments that we pass to the method. And we can see here we have four coordinate positions. One, two, three, four. And they are responsible for making sure that we have a complete triangle drawn. And we make the color blue and we make the width. Five. So when this program runs, this is what we can expect as the output. Now we will see later in the playlist that there are other ways of drawing triangles, but I've shown you a way here that just draws a triangle using the create line method. And of course, you can draw many different shapes using the create line method. And you just need to decide what the coordinate positions are for the shape that you draw. And of course, the shape will be drawn out of straight lines using this method. Now this shape was drawn by a Python program invoking the create underscore line method four times. Each time it was invoked it drew a line and of course you can see that this shape is made out of four lines so I've called the create underscore line method four times. Now of course I have to know what the coordinate positions are for these lines in order to draw them to give this shape. So I'm going to say that this was drawn with a computer program that created a canvas that was 400 by 400 and that the coordinate positions for the lines are as shown by these call out boxes. Let's now consider this output and you can see it's an identical shape and in fact it's the same size. But the difference is this has better looking corners. There's a better join to the corners where the lines appear to have been joined. But the thing is, this was drawn using one call, one invocation of the create underscore line method. And of course, that method took in a number of coordinate positions as part of its argument. So if we consider the coordinate positions for this one, that are shown here, and they're identical to the coordinate positions shown for the other shape, which they should be because of the same shape. The difference is that this one was drawn with a segment of code that had four program statements, and this one was drawn with one program statement. Of course, there were the other program statements around these the import and so on. What I'd like you to have a go at now is pause the video and have a go at drawing these shapes. For this one, have a go at doing it by drawing four lines. And for this one, have a go at doing it using just one line. And I'll show the answers on the last slide of this video. This is the computer program that will do the first shape you saw on the previous slide. And you can see there are four program statements here. And each one of these invoke the create underscore line method. And if you look here, you can see the various coordinate positions for the beginning and end of the line. And of course, we've set the fill to blue and the width to five, as you can see here. Now, if we consider this program and compare it to this one here, you can see that this one line has replaced these four lines here with the advantage that this will give us a better look to the display because it has better joins to the lines. Of course, we're not really joining the lines in the same way as we are here. But what this is doing is allowing us to draw a line that has bends in it. And these are the coordinate positions here. And you can see we have 100, 100, 300, 100, 350, 300, 50, 300, and then 100, 100 again, which is where we started here. So we can see we can do it with one line, or we can do it with four lines. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video?